Well, for more analysis, we can speak now to Philip Ingram, who is a former British military intelligence officer who joins us from London. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, what do you make, first of all, of Israel's claim of finding weaponry and, I quote, terror infrastructure at the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City? Well, I think Israel was expecting to find some. Um, I've seen some of the pictures and what they're finding is a, a little less than they were hoping to get out. But um, given what's going on in the international uh, domain, they wanted to get something out quickly as they search for the entrances to the Hamas command structure that's underneath the hospital. How can we be sure that it's there? And, and as you say, these pictures are not really the smoking gun, are they? I mean, the smoking gun would be the labyrinth of tunnels and that Hamas command centre that we've heard about, but so far not seen. Uh, you know, the Israelis have spent a long time uh, examining Hamas's tunnel infrastructure under Gaza. There's hundreds of kilometres of it, um, and they have been using hospitals, mosques, um, other civilian infrastructure um, uh, to hide their main elements of it underneath. Uh, the Americans have carried out separate um, intelligence investigation into this as well and you know, have agreed with the Israeli assessment. Joe Biden has nodded along to it whenever he's been asked uh, questions along that. So you know, there, there's, there's no doubt that Hamas have got um, large parts of their command structure and their tunnels under, under the hospital and under other sensitive areas across Gaza um, because they they want the Israelis to try and attack them because they want um, the international community to see civilian casualties. Uh, and how would you rate Israel's progress so far in achieving its objectives there in Gaza? Well, it, it, it's interesting. There are two clocks running. There's the political clock and there's the um, the military clock. Militarily, I think Israel is progressing very well indeed. They're progressing a lot faster than I thought. It's very, very difficult fighting through um, built-up areas uh, in the way that they're doing against an enemy that blends completely in with the local population and uses the local population as shields. Politically, I think Israel um, is in a more difficult position because we're already starting to see the rhetoric um, from some of the international uh, leaders changing ever so slightly um, whenever there are more and more um, pictures of women and children um, being killed by the activities uh, that Israel is carrying out. Um, and that does not play well domestically. And we have to remember that we're coming into a year of um, domestic elections in the United States, the United Kingdom and elsewhere. Um I know there's a lot of uh, international concern about what's happening in, in Gaza. And as you mentioned, that's resulting in pressure being piled on, on Israel, pressure for a ceasefire. A ceasefire. Uh, and, and Israel's, you know, uh, resisting that pressure for a ceasefire, saying it would be advantageous to Hamas. Why would it be advantageous only to Hamas and, and not to both sides? Well, Israel doesn't need a ceasefire. <laughs> you know, it's got what's called in military terms the, the momentum at the moment. The momentum is with it. If you have a ceasefire and stop, trying to get that momentum back again takes a lot of time and will probably end up in more casualties. And, and actually, if you have a ceasefire without there being some form of negotiating position on the table to try and get some form of longer term end state and a ceasefire where both sides want a longer term end state, then there's no point. You know, you, you're going to have to restart and, and keep it going again. You know, Hamas um, has said they don't want to cease fire. They've said all they want to see is the destruction of Israel as a state and the killing of all Jews. They haven't changed their line on that. Um, and therefore, you know, there, there's no longer term negotiating position. Um, it's very naive just to, to believe just, that. Just to jump to you there, because I mean, Hamas does seem to be pushing for a ceasefire, or at least pauses, via its negotiators in Qatar, who are using that as a bargaining chip in order to release some of the civilian hostages that are being held there. So they seem, on the one hand, they do they do want a ceasefire. Otherwise, they wouldn't use it as a, job, as a bargaining chip. They, 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 they want pauses. They want the ability to regroup. Um, I think they've been caught by surprise at the speed of Israel's movement um, in through uh, the areas and, and the way that that is affecting them. They need to be able to move more manpower and more ammunition around different areas. Um, and a, a, a humanitarian pause would allow them to do that. Um, you, but without you, the, the, what they're doing, and Hamas is brilliant at this, is they see the, the amount of pressure that's coming on Israel politically. So whenever it comes to getting statements out into the international community, they will say 
what they know will stir those emotions up in Paris, in London, in Washington, so that the political pressure that's going on in Israel to, to stop um, uh, and and give some form of pause is, is growing and growing. Uh, this is where there's that balance between the military necessity to keep going once you've got the momentum and the political pressure that's coming to um, uh, ha have, have a ceasefire and stop the um, innocent Palestinians getting killed. OK, well, I'm really sorry. We're going to have to leave it there because we're out of time. I had lots of other questions I wanted to ask you. But thank you for speaking thank to you. us here on France 24. Philip Ingram, uh, former British military intelligence officer. We hope to have you back with us again sometime soon. Thank you.